Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another edition of the IPA interview series. My name is Chris Bogdan and I am the second vice president for the IPA. And I'm excited to be here with Mr. Eddie Shevitz, IPA Polka Hall of Famer from 2005. Hey Eddie, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Happy to be with you. This is awesome. I, uh, you're one of the interviews that I always wanted to listen to. Wow. So. Okay, well now you're going to conduct it and there then you, you can listen to it. There you go. So Eddie, <laughs> let's go back. How did you start playing polka music? Actually, I started on uh, taking instrumental uh, lessons in the fourth grade and joined the band in school. So that was my beginning with, uh, with music. Because I have three older sisters, okay. okay, and they all played instruments. My parents uh, did not play instruments, but they were mm. very musical. Okay, My oldest sister, Linda, first chair flute all the way through school. Okay. Uh, my sister, Carol became a music major, taught uh -huh. music, it had a career in music. My youngest sister, Elaine, uh, played the flute, but then gave it up, went into nursing, blah, blah, blah. So I was just, I was the youngest, and I started playing clarinet. And then in ninth grade, I started playing the saxophone, and a fellow student asked me to join a band. He was putting together a band, okay, because his older brother had a band, so he wanted his own band. He was a drummer. Uh, Joe Meyerly, and we were called The Intervals, and that's how I began. In the ninth grade, playing gigs, played a variety of music, okay. but you had to play polka music. Yep. So that's what I did. That's when I started. So you started with the clarinet, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you picked up the saxophone afterwards. Yes. And then which other instruments do you play? Well, once I uh, progressed, it was 1972 when we I met the uh, Dynastics. Okay the musicians who we, we became the dynastics in 72 and early on we wanted to play Chicago style music okay, okay. Um, if I can jump ahead a little yeah. bit Tony Kempinski uh, the drummer and mm -hmm. leader of the dynastics he played on the road with Marion Lush okay he was in high school playing yeah. drums and uh, then he left the road and decided to form the dynastics and we all got together and because we wanted to go after that Chicago style yeah. sound, that's when I self-taught myself the trumpet okay. <laughs> to add to the to add sound. Because we started with five piece, a trumpet, and myself on clarinet and sax, a concertina accordion who also played bass, mm -hmm. the Kempinskis and, mm -hmm. and Tony. So I taught myself trumpet so that we could have that variety of sound, two now, trumpets and trumpet reed. Cool. Um, so do you play anything else besides wind instruments? Wind instruments is my thing. No piano, no concertina? Unfortunately not. I, <laughs> I bought a concertina for the purpose of making arrangements, yeah. the, w working on arrangements. So I'm, I'm not a good player, but I, I, I can do enough to build an arrangement for a song. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So speaking about that, we're going to jump ahead on a question. But um, So writing songs. Have you wrote a lot of songs in your life? Done a lot of musical arranging Ranging. for polka bands, yep. for polka parts. Yep. Uh, I just seem to have a knack for writing original riffs and arranging the songs, and that, that's that's what I love to do. It's nice. one of the joys. I, I have. How about like vocals? Have you ever written a song with um, words and all that? Do I've done quite a bit of that actually. Okay. Usually it's a group effort. Yep. Um, I'm not as good as some are at coming up yeah. with original ideas, but mm -hmm. you give me an original idea and I can expand on that. Nice. Make the words rhyme, put them into cadence, so I've, nice. I've, yeah, I've been involved in a lot of songs, writing lyrics and creating the story of the song. Yeah. Cool. So you said the first band was The Intervals, and it was a variety band. Mm -hmm. How long did you play for them? Well, it'd be ninth grade, tenth grade, couple of years, and then uh, on some other fellow classmates yeah. in high school started a band. They okay. were called the Sterling. I'm impressed I'm remembering these <laughs> names. Um, and same thing, it was a variety band of school students. And I want to tell you one quick story, okay. going back to high school now. Yeah. The, we're talking early 1970s. And uh, in 1972, I attended my very first IPA convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Red Carpet Inn. Okay. Now, I had gotten into the local polka bands in Michigan. Yeah. All right. My parents listened to the radio shows every weekend, and 
And uh, anyway, we attended our first convention in 72, and this was just eye-opening to me because now I got to see the, the national polka bands perform. Yeah. And all these people, I mean thousands of people over that course of that weekend attended. And I heard a band called the Tones, who were all former Versatones that yeah. toured with Eddie Blazanchik. Yeah. And uh, they had gotten married and gotten jobs, etc. so they formed their own local band, the Tones. And I stood in front of that band and was just amazed at the musical precision and the variety that they were able to play during their arrangements. And all those musicians of the Tones are just phenomenal musicians. And anyway, that's when I really got bit by the bugs. I want to I want to sound like that. I want to play like that. So then you would say they inspired you? Yes, absolutely. That was your first inspiration? They were known as the Cadillac sound of polka Pocus. music, the Tones. And that was my strongest inspiration in polka music. They were nice. That was one band I never got an opportunity to hear live. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things like you want to go back in time and hear certain bands. That would be absolutely one on the list. So, so you play with a lot of different bands over the years, a lot of different styles, and obviously a lot of people see that. Um, so, who was some of your favorite bands to play with? Wow. See, my approach, Chris. Every band I work yeah. with, whether they're just a local band or a touring band, to me it's a chance to grow musically. I just love playing a variety of music for what I can learn yeah. from each band. Yeah. Favorite bands, obviously the Dynastics, mm -hmm. uh, and then that morphed into a band called Prime Drive. Um, obviously Eddie Boas on Six Versa Tones. I mean, how many people get to sing with Eddie B yeah. week after week? True. What an experience. Yeah. Uh, and a challenge for me, because I really had to sharpen my trumpet skills, obviously, yeah. to play with the versatones. Um, Stash Kalonka in the 1980s, I got to harmonize with him, which was awesome. a very special. Yeah. And play honky style. Yeah. Um, so that's a couple of my favorites. One of my favorite bands of all time, of course, The Brass Connection, mm -hmm. TBC. I got to play with them for three years, and nice. that was a joy. Well, I remember we played a gig with Stush Kalanka at Seven Springs. The very, I think it was the last time Stush played Seven Springs. Uh -huh. And it was my most memorable gigs. You and Wally Dombrowski were playing trumpet and clarinet. I was playing bass and Richie Zabrowski was playing accordion concertina. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was electrifying. Every, every time I got to play with him, it was fun. And that was a good job. The other job that I remember that we were talking this weekend was you were playing with Little John in the ATM band one time, and mm -hmm. we were doing an American set, and I couldn't think of the song until Friday, but um, Carlos Santana, we were doing Europa, and you ripped off a sax solo on Europa that to this day is still one of the greatest sax solos I've ever heard in my life. Oh, you're so kind. So that, that was very fun. So, so talking about bands and where you've played, so what is one of the favorite places, or what is the favorite area for you to play in? I did do my share of road work and touring, yeah. but it seemed like we were mostly, or most often, driving out to the East Coast, Connecticut, New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, Massachusetts, you know, to, to perform, uh, and uh, played the Bayway Polish home in Elizabeth, New Jersey many times. That was like one yeah. of the jobs, you'd, you'd have two jobs on a weekend, or maybe three, yeah. and that was just one of the jobs that you... So many of the great bands took, even with Eddie B played there, Spaghetti with Eddie, I'll never forget that. They, that was their <laughs> promotional yeah. thing. Come and have Spaghetti with Eddie, yeah. and Eddie B and the Versatones played. Um, some of my favorite jobs were with Sash Kalonka at, at Bayway. Why? Like, like, what made Bayway your favorite place? You know, I guess I, it was a smaller venue, mm -hmm. so more intimate, Yeah. Uh, but I love the sound in there. I played some of my best jobs in that little venue, I guess because I could hear, the, everybody in the band, I could hear each individual musician really well. Acoustics yeah. are sometimes a problem in certain venues for mm -hmm. musicians to be able to hear properly. And I heard myself so well there and I could just relax and play and do, do what I love to do. That makes a big it difference when you, when you can hear yourself play and stuff like that. Um, so let me ask you this, so why did you pursue polkas instead of other music? Because obviously you were a great musician, young kid, 
Like, what made you want to get into polkas? Was it that IPA convention? Before that? Okay. Actually, um, as I said, my, my parents listened to polkas. Yeah. Uh, so I heard them on the radio on the weekends. But I think what started me off was uh, my, my, my mom and dad had myself and my three sisters, we joined Polish folk dance group. Mm -hmm. It was a Polish national alliance group that was local. PNA. Okay. My mother sewed all of our costumes and made them traditional Polish costumes. <laughs> she was fantastic. Yeah. But just as a little kid, and, and you're dancing to the polka, and you learn the Krakowiak, and yeah. you learn the Obetic, and the Polonaise, and things like that. And it, it was so fun as mm -hmm. a kid. I, I enjoyed it, and, but I, I right away I took to that music that was so uh, vibrant and positive and fun. Yeah. So I, I gained an appreciation very early for polka because of that experience. And they also offered Polish language class. Okay. Which, sure, I'll take Polish language. This is kind of neat. And so it taught me some basics of Polish, which later on came yeah. in pretty handy. Yeah. Right? So, so do you speak pl um, fluent Polish? Oh, no. I wish I could. I okay. uh, never really continued to pursue that because then I got yeah. into the, the, music the music itself. Percent. But, oh yeah, like many of us musicians, you know, I was able to take the little Wally song books and the Marion Lush albums and yep. sing along and read along. Yep. But that foundational Polish class, you know, taught me the basics of proper pronunciation. pronunciation. So, uh, and you know, we all learn phrases mm -hmm. and uh, I can look at Polish lyrics and kind of pick out certain things of what the story is. Okay. But as I'm arranging music, I try to always find someone who is fluent, yeah. who can explain the meaning of the song. Because okay. even though it's in Polish, I still need to know what the story's, the story's about. Because that yeah. shapes my interpretation as to how I'm going to perform that song or arrange that song. Interesting. Interesting. So you said you like playing all types of music. I mean, that's definitely true now with your current band, New Brass Express. You guys do phenomenal American music, phenomenal country, phenomenal everything. Um, it sounds like you just like playing music. I do. That's, it doesn't matter what style or what. You just you really just enjoy it. Music intrigues me. And when I listen to music, and I want to credit my father, Chet Chivietz. He and I, as a kid, we used to sit in the basement, and he would play records, mm. and we would listen to them together. Wow. And he would point things out, listen to that trombone, listen to that trumpet, listen to that saxophone, listen to that clarinet. So I learned how to listen to music. But your father wasn't a musician, you said. He was not, but, but he, he was, was very musical. How, what does that mean? How can you be musical and not a musician? I'm curious. Love to dance. Okay. And now uh, my dad was a World War II veteran. Mm. Okay, so uh, music was, you didn't have all this watch a screen stuff yeah. back then. It okay. was live music and live entertainment. Music. And uh, being from World War II, of course, you know, the big bands, Glenn Miller, yeah. Artie Shaw, and stuff like that. So we would listen to that. And I thank him for that because it, I helped, it helped me to de develop my listening skills. And then as we formed the dynastics in the 70s, we wanted to play Chicago style, and there weren't any Chicago style bands in Michigan at that time that we're aware of. No. And there was no written music. Okay. So we had to learn everything by ear. Okay. So that's, again, where I developed my ear. Because, awesome. as being, and you know this yourself, being able to play by ear gives you the ability now to embellish True. and be more emotional instead yeah. of restricting yourself so. to that printed page and I have no uh, no problem reading music yeah. I mean I read it all through school and yeah. I, I, I read it with our current band yeah. but if you can put that chart away and I say this to younger musicians just take one song put that chart aside and let's play it from memory and now what can what? we do with that melody what can, how can we express ourselves to reach that audience. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's That was going to go into one of the questions is, do you have any advice for new musicians? And that sounds like that's very... Listening skills is, to me, very important. I understand reading skills are too, because uh, 
you know, the dynamics, yeah. the markings in the song, the articulation. But you can't always write emotion yeah. on a piece of paper. Sure. That has to come from listening and then finding in your heart what, how to produce that. And American music intrigues me too because the, as I came up through the decades, it just seems like I always worked with a lot of wedding bands and mm -hmm. polka bands, so we had to play American you music. Play so it, yeah. as I listened to it, I said, how does that saxophone player get that sound? How does he make that uh, connection with the audience through his music, through his instrument? So I, I kind of study that stuff. Well, you know what? It does mean something because my brother, obviously you played with my brother with TPM, yes. and uh, he still tells me stories like that about how he's learned a lot from you because of that. Exactly what you just said. Wow. Kind of every time he thinks when he plays, he thinks of every note he's playing. And he's always said, I got that from Eddie Shevitz because Eddie Shevitz would always tell me, just listen to that note, just look at that note, just visualize that note and stuff like that. Not to get technical, yeah. uh, but... For, for new musicians, you know, one of the lessons I learned, and I, I have a, a, an uncle who spent his entire life uh, in a music career, okay. Joe Smeal from California. Um, when he teaches students, he'll take one note, pick a note, G, a C, and he'll say, just play that one note. And play that note and focus and understand what note you're playing and how it sounds. And these are the technicalities behind music that, you know, you watch some of these fantastic musicians yeah. and, and are amazed at how easy they make it look uh, yeah. when they perform. True. When uh, there's, there are a lot of technical aspects to it that if you focus on it, it, it pays dividends. So I have a question. Do you listen to music a lot? I do. Do you? All types or do you just... All types. Uh, and it, a lot of times in my car, if I'm driving, you know, I've got the preset stations, I've got the classical, okay. I've got the country, and the jazz, okay. and the polka. Okay. You know, those are my top four, I guess. So you always listen top to Top 40 music. sometimes. Okay. Interesting. But, uh, yeah. I wish I could listen to music. For some reason, I can't. Well, it makes me fall asleep when I'm driving. Really? It does. So Interesting. That's why, like, when I'm in the car, when I'm driving, I listen to talk radio and not music. I listen to talk radio, too. I have to admit, the older I get, the yeah. more I get involved in <laughs> politics and religion and all that stuff, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the that, music is my escape. I just I escape. love going into that world of, of, of listening. And then, you know how music can touch you? If you close your eyes and listen to music and let your mind create an image, <laughs> that's kind of fun. That is. That <laughs> Try is. that. <laughs> So, um, what was some of the favorite tunes you ever recorded? You've recorded a lot. How, actually, how many albums have you recorded? Oh my gosh. You know, I lost count now. Uh, it's over 50 albums. Okay, 50 albums. Yeah. So then, like, what, what are some of your favorite tunes of all the ones you did? Like, what sticks out? You know what sticks out to me? Uh, Dynastics, Back on Track album, which came out in the 80s. There's a few songs on there that I never get tired of hearing and, and still receive compliments to this day. One, especially by musicians, our version of the Helena Polka mm -hmm. or Helen Polka. That was an arrangement that evolved over time. You know, uh, we as a band had listened to various arrangements mm -hmm. of it and then it evolved into what we recorded on that album and musicians still to this yeah. day say that it's such an extraordinary arrangement. That and uh, the song called Always. I started, that was a, a, a popular song, a pop tune. Uh, back in the 80s, I actually started working on that tune when I was still with Stash Kalonka. Okay. But for whatever reason, decided to save it. And then when Dynastics did back on track recording, uh, I had arranged this song. Atlantic Star was the mm -hmm. name of the pop group. that, And it was very popular. Heard it on the radio all the time. And it was a slow song. But for some reason, the lyrics captured me and the melody, and so I adapted it nice. and converted it into polka tempo, and that was, that's, that's one of my favorite song. songs on that album. Yeah. Well, i got to tell you, Helena, um, when that album came out, I remember, I think I'm still in high school, and um, I actually went up in my bedroom, and I wanted to record that 
just like you guys did. So I, I tried to put them on. I played trumpet. I played accordion. I played clarinet. Wow. I went down. I got my brother's sax and clarinet. I'll never let anybody listen to it because it's horrible. But it was like I tried to duplicate that. So there we go. That is definitely that is a phenomenal song. What phenomenal a compliment! Image. Yeah. And what a what a great exercise. And again, I would I would advise you, young musicians. You know, find your favorite song or favorite musician. Yeah that you look up to that you say, wow, I wish I could play like that. You can. Yeah. Because music is, is a bunch of little parts, notes and phrases all put together. Yeah. So if you break it down measure by measure, can I tell you a cute story? Sure. In my formative polka years, you know, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm saying, trying to just, how do these guys play these parts? Yeah. They sound so technical. Back when I was young, um, my parents had a, a record player mm -hmm. that had four speeds on it. Mm -hmm. It had your 78, your th 33 and a third, 45, 45 16. and 16. Uh -huh. And I discovered that if you play a record in 16, it kind of drops things a, about an octave. Yep. A little out of tune, but an octave, and it slows it, it slows down. It down. So I could listen to some of these very technical parts, and it's, oh, that's the notes they played. So I don't yeah. think you could find sixteens now. Not anymore. On the record the LPs, I doubt it. Turntable, yeah. but you could now with the computers, you could do it digitally. Yes. Anyway, same yeah. thing. So, mm -hmm. um, so tell me about TPM because you also got oh. to record a, or you got to star in a movie. Yes, that was a great experience. You know. Uh, what a what a legacy band that Toledo mm -hmm. Polka Motion and they just it seems seems like every era they play in they yeah. they've got a dynamic wonderful band yeah. so it was just at a point in 1998 I joined them okay. um, and they, it was just a turnover of guys yeah. uh, in the band and uh, myself and Jeff Maletsko joined the band and you know Teddy Lang was there and your brother was there and Joe Zaleski of course and uh, Joe I, I got a tip my hat to Joe Zaleski. He's a brilliant band leader, and he, he, he's like a coach, man. Mm -hmm. He can assemble terrific talent, and he knows how to use that talent and organize it and let his talent do what they do best. And just some great opportunities. That Welcome to Collinwood movie yeah. story is a great one. Uh, these two uh, directors right from Cleveland. Okay. Uh, we're, are putting this movie together. It's it's a comedy with George Clooney, Jennifer Esposito, etc. Some some great actors, and it's a story about Collinwood, which is a real mm -hmm. community in the Cleveland area, etc. Yep. They needed a polka band, and uh, these two brothers, the directors, the Russo brothers, came to Cleveland. They went to a polka dance. I, I think it was the CPA or a USPA. Okay. I think it was a CPA dance. Okay, one of the two, and they walk in and they obviously look. Not like polka people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they go to the bar, and uh, Barb Hans Haslow's son, John Haslow, mm -hmm. happened to be there at the bar, and he struck up a conversation with these two directors. And next thing you know, yeah, we're looking for a polka band. And John goes, I got the band for you. And he runs out to his car, <laughs> brings in a TPM CD, and hands it to the directors. Next thing you know, Joe Zaleski gets a phone call, hey, we're doing a movie, blah, blah, blah. Nice. So we got the part. Nice. What a great experience to be on the movie set, have them film you, see how the movie's being made, yeah. et cetera. And so we're on the soundtrack. Um, they wanted original material. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jeff Maletsko wrote a song called You and Me. Mm -hmm. Jeff is a great songwriter. Um, had great, great experience working with Jeff. And anyway, uh, so we were in the movie, and then we got invited to the movie premiere. Nice. Here in Cleveland, okay. so we performed at that. Local news was there filming oh, and wow. everything, and we played uh, an, an after party after the premiere of the movie. We got invited to Hollywood, and we okay. went as a band, walked on the red carpet, went to the movie premiere. Really? And Joe Zaleski and I uh, made the trip to Cannes, France for the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, wow. And that was very prestigious. And at that premiere, the directors were introducing the movie and the stars, and they recognized Joe and I, and we stood up and we got a round of applause at the premiere in France. That's awesome. Yeah, it was wonderful. So did you meet George Clooney? We did not. He was not in any of our scenes, uh, okay. unfortunately. Okay. But uh, Patricia Clarkston mm -hmm. and Jennifer Esposito 
and the, uh, what's the gentleman's name who did uh, the Green Mile? Uh, he was in that, not Tom Hanks, but yeah. the other gentleman. Yeah, yeah. I'll think of it after this interview, yeah. probably. Uh, we got to meet him, and, and they we went to wardrobe, and they dressed us in outfits and makeup and the whole shot. I still have the outfit. They oh, let us did? keep our outfits really? from the movie, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So let me ask you this. So what do you think sets you apart in polka music? If you had to look back, what sets you apart? I, you know, I never, haven't thought a lot about that because I'm a moving forward kind of a yeah. guy. Except when I'm doing research on music, I go back and listen okay. to the masters. How did they interpret the song, the guys who originated the song or the music? And I learn from them first before I attempt to rearrange a song. Interesting. Right? Um, but what sets me apart? I guess I, I'm kind of a detail-oriented person. Mm -hmm. I take the music very seriously and above all I want to I want to be professional and I want music to reach the people. I can safely say that's prob that's absolutely true because every time I get to play with you on stage it doesn't matter what band you played with where it was always the same professionalism you wanted to make the music sound good just always the same focus of playing that music on stage. Thank you. So whatever band it, it was so. so how about a wacky band story? It has to be G-rated. Oh. Yeah, just a little. Uh, there's, there's a ton of them. There's obviously. probably tons of them. Like most you know, because I've played over the decades, yeah. you know, so there's always funny things that happen. But uh, I guess one of my favorites is uh, uh, with Stash Kowalka. Okay. Uh, we did a lot of road work with him, played all the major fests. And... Uh, we're driving, uh, it was a, one of those long drives from one gig to the next, mm -hmm. and we're driving out way out to the East Coast, Massachusetts or Connecticut, one of the two, playing at some old Polish hall, and we get there, and, and we got to hurry up and get mm -hmm. set up because uh, we got to start playing. Yeah. And so uh, behind the stage are a couple of uh, bathrooms, you know, mm -hmm. uh, men's and ladies' bathrooms. Yeah. So. We go in, all us guys are in the band, we're in the men's room, and we're taking sink baths and showers, mm -hmm. right? And I'm in the hall, I got my hair dry. This is the 80s yeah. now. So I got my hair dryer, I'm blow drying my hair. And Stash Golonka comes up, and he needs to uh, sit down and read a book, so to speak. Okay. Uh, but we got the men's room all dominated, and so he runs in the ladies' room. So now you know what's going to happen. Of course, some lady comes running up, <laughs> and Bill Gula, our trumpet yeah. player, says, no, 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 our band leader's in there. You can't go in there. She says, I don't care. I need to go. So she goes in there, <laughs> and we're laughing. And we open the door, and we see Stasha's feet and her feet, and they're having a conversation back and oh forth. Oh, God. how old's your kid, and what's he do? Oh. So we got the biggest laugh out of that. Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. And one more Stasha yeah, story. Yeah, Uh we were just talking about this. Um, Johnny Haas. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the venue? Sunnybrook. Sunnybrook. Yes. We're playing Sunnybrook. So we're going from, I always met him in Toledo. You know, I lived in Detroit, mm -hmm. so I would meet the guys coming from Chicago. Meet him in Toledo. And we're driving the van out to Sunnybrook. Well, we stop at a plaza for a fuel stop, etc. And while Stash is gone, yeah. one of the guys pushes the clock forward in the van, a couple, two, three hours ahead. Stash never realizes it. Now we're getting closer to Sunnybrook and say, oh my God, we're late. Oh my God, what am I gonna say? So he's panicking. Oh my God. So we get there, he runs up to Johnny Haas right away. I'm so sorry, but we had a flat tire, all that stuff, you know, all those excuses. <laughs> and we're laughing because Johnny Haas goes, Stash, you got an hour and a half before you play. Don't worry about it. Was he mad at you guys? Well, of course, but yeah. <laughs> That's funny. No, he was. He took it all in stride. So you gave advice, I think, as musicians. Like you mentioned some things throughout this. How about advice for somebody starting a band? Like you've obviously played in tons of bands. If you had to give some young person advice in starting a band, what would you give them? Mm. Or what's some of the advice that you yeah, think would be? Some, yeah, because today is so different so from different. when I yes. started. But uh, I guess... Um, Joe Zaleski is a good guy to ask because, again, I mentioned mm -hmm. him earlier. Uh, uh, you need to assemble talent, and not only musical talent is important, but personality, yep. approach to the music. You know, uh, you got to coordinate that somehow. 
uh, sound systems today, oh my gosh, the, the electronics today is beyond me. I never got involved in that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I would say find a mentor, mm -hmm. you know, look at what bands are successful in your eye and talk to them and see what they would recommend. I recommend, you know, personalities matter, musical expertise. And sometimes you don't have to have the greatest musicians mm -hmm. in the world, but guys that love the music, that love the people, uh, and are, are willing to perform to the best that they can, you, you can still be successful. That's because it's just like a ball team, yeah. you know. You have varying degrees of talent, but how do you how use it? How do you it? put them together? Yeah. That's advice across the board. It's companies. I think that's, so. That's right. Everything. So, all right, so to a, as we're winding down, let me ask you this question. So what do you think was your greatest achievement in pulpy music? My greatest achievement? Yes. That's a hard question. That's why we were going to end with that one. That's a hard question. I guess longevity, being, being around uh, as long as I have, and I have been asked by so many bands, to record, to perform with them, uh, occasionally for ideas. Yeah. Um, so I guess my greatest achievement is probably just being, um, I've gained the respect of polka organizations, mm -hmm. of the in, in, just the polka public in general. And that's very rewarding to me. Okay. You know, well, yeah, looking over the list of recordings and they all have memories behind yeah. them and and I feel, uh, wow, that's that, that that's quite an achievement, you know. But but being be able to perform also, uh, the, just the opportunities that have come my way to perform with some of the greatest musicians yeah. in our business and bands, um, that's an achievement, I guess. Awesome, and it doesn't seem there's no stopping you. You just want to continue this, right? I'd like to as long as I can. You don't as get tired of traveling. The Lord gives me health and and the ability. Yeah, you don't get tired of traveling. Well, I don't travel as, as much, much anymore sure, now. Yeah. Uh, the the New Brass Express, you know, we're Michigan based pretty much. Daryl uh, is a businessman yeah. and he's very very tied up with that, so we don't travel as much. Uh, I kind of miss traveling a little bit. Uh, I, I'd love to because some of the areas I used to go, even out east, yeah. I just don't make it out there anymore, and I, I miss the people. But uh, it's a sacrifice. Yeah. It, 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 for everyone, uh, this polka music thing. You do it out of love, you mm -hmm. know that. And the fans, they dedicate time and their resources to attend and support. You've got the organizations like the IPA, USPA, CPA, and others that spend their time and effort to put on these events mm -hmm. and promote the music. So it's... And one last thing is polka music, I see it as a unifying force, mm -hmm. a unifier. It brings people together. And they're not all Polish. It's, it's all different European backgrounds, etc. Because uh, as one newspaper used to say years ago, polka, the orig America's original party music. Yeah. Even the cowboys yeah. danced the polka, yeah. right? Yeah. They, even the classical musicians of Europe wrote polkas. Yeah. So it's universal. And that's the beautiful thing about music. It's a universal language. To bring people together. Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you would like to tell our listeners? Keep on supporting polka music. It's, it's happy music. As many have said, it's, it's positive. Mm -hmm. And let's stay together with this. It's a lot of fun. That's great advice. Yeah. Thank you. Eddie, it was a pleasure, as always. <laughs> Thank you, and um, congratulations on all your achievements, and good luck in the future. Thank you very much, Chris. Awesome.